ultimately all science begins with observation and the most fundamental observational process of all is this right here, our own eyes. Everything else is just an extension of that. Right. So here's what Jeremiah Van Rensselaer, Rensselaer MD wrote um, in the American Journal of Science, 1826. The, in the title of his, his report is the no notice of a recent discovery of the fossil remains of the mastodon. He says during a jaunt last made last month in company with Dr. Decay and Mr. William Cooper to the tertiary region of New Jersey, we had the good fortune to disinter and to bring to the city, the skeleton nearly entire of a mastodon or mammoth as it is colloquially but improperly termed about three miles west of the watering place is he is situated the farm of poplar occupied by mr william croxon esquire and owned by his father who nearly six years ago began to reclaim a marsh about a quarter of a mile from the house a marsh would be a low area Usually it will have, it will be very boggy. There will be peat deposits typically in a marsh. Sometimes they can be very thick, right? This marsh was usually covered by about two feet of water. The water was easily drained off. When the moisture having evaporated and the earth particles consolidated, the surface sunk very gradually between two and three feet below its former level. Last year in crossing this field, formed by the reclaimed marsh the attention of the proprietor was attracted by something sticking out of the ground a lot of these finds are somebody seeing something sticking out of the ground which proved to be a tooth he then searched a little and found part of the head of a large animal partially exposed being covered by grass only mr croxon had the kindness to conduct us to the spot where we soon found sufficient inducement to dig, and in short time our hopes were fully realized and our most sanguine expectations surpassed. In the course of that and the following day, we recovered all the bones of the skeleton that Mr. C had left. It is to be observed that our skeleton was found much nearer to the ocean than any yet discovered, and is perhaps to be considered as one of the most perfect that we possess of that immense animal. The bones near the surface of the field and within the influence of frost have all suffered more or less, but as we proceeded down, they became more sound and the bones of the legs and the feet are perfectly solid and in excellent preservation. Its position corresponding with that of the skeleton recently found on the Wabash was vertical, the feet resting on a stratum of sand and gravel. How do you get a skeleton preserved vertical? <laughs> right. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Then we'll they go. They have to be buried while they're standing up, basically. Yeah. 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 Um, then we'll go to the, uh, to the year 1952, right? In the Ohio Journal of Science was a report. And here's what it says. In November of 1949, some workmen at Oralton Farms, which is in Madison County, Ohio, were probing with an iron rod to locate a plugged drain tile. Striking a hard object, they made an excavation, finding instead of a tile, a large mammal bone. The manager of the farms notified members of the staff of the Ohio State Museum who identified the specimen is that of the mastodon Mammut americanum. Arrangements were made to excavate the site. Excavation showed that the bones were lying on and in a layer of limey clay or marl about one foot in thickness, which extended to a depth of about three feet. The marl lies upon the glacial till. Above the marl layer is a layer of black muck 
or peaty material, peat, peaty material about two feet in depth. Now again, so what we have here is kind of a, a low basin environment, kind of a marsh, right? Just very similar to the finding that we were just looking at from 1826. The remains of this mammoth are found in there, very near the surface, right? So it turns out then going on here that the skeleton proved to be badly disturbed and the bones crushed and broken. As an example of the amount of disturbance, one of the ribs lay beneath one of the tusks, while another was thrust through an aperture in the pelvis. Mm. A shoulder blade rested to the right of the skull, and one of the large neck vertebrae was found about 10 feet from the skull near a portion of the pelvis. In spite of the wide dislocation of the parts, the bones of one of the feet remained intact and in place in the spot where the animal last stepped. <laughs> Even the largest of the bones, such as the thigh bones, were broken squarely across, indicating that some considerable force had been exerted upon them. Any conclusion as to an agency powerful enough to cause such destruction must be highly speculative. So you got to picture this. How, how would you accomplish that? Well, basically, you could get something very similar to that effect if you had a gigantic hammer and as this mastodon is ambling across the, the land, this hammer comes down and crushes them flat, snapping the huge th femurs, which I'm going to show you a picture here. We're going to do a screen share. Um, there's a few behind Brad, too. Yeah, there's a mastodon behind Brad, exactly. Perfect. So, yeah, crush that guy flat and spread bones all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. So here's the pit. And... Oh, this is the one you were just talking about. This is the one I was just talking about. Yeah, so here he is. He's, he's cleaning off the skull, which is right there. And you can see some of the other bones right over here. They've got the pit roped off. And you see that's under, buried under, looks like a total of about four feet of material here. There's the femur right over there. That's the thigh bone. Okay, so here's the femur. And the arrow is pointing to a break right there where the femur has snapped. And you can see the size of that bone. I mean, it's six to eight inches thick. So, interestingly, what to what do we attribute an instant like that? What force could crush a mastodon? <laughs> 